name is Caroline Gabriel, Research Director of Maravedis Refink, the leading analyst and research company specialising in mobile and wireless infrastructure. The Maravedis Refink RAN service provides five-year forecasts and deep trend analysis covering wireless infrastructure deployment plans by the top 40 mobile operator groups. Much of the recent conversation has been dominated by the adoption of small cells and their importance to the operator's cost and capacity targets. We have seen small cells gain volume in residential scenarios, but the biggest question marks hang over their importance in public access, whether indoors or outdoors. Here, deployment, quality of service and macro integration issues are far more complex and we do not expect to see critical mass in these deployments until late 2015 at the earliest. However, based on our detailed and regular surveys of a broad base of mobile operators, we believe the picture has often been oversimplified, leading to some false expectations and misunderstandings. It's important to grasp that cells have been shrinking for years. 3G cells typically have shorter range than 2G, for instance, because they're in higher bands and are more geared to data capacity. The big change operators are now contemplating is to create a dedicated capacity layer separate from the macro coverage layer, though fully interworking, and made up of even smaller cells. Within that shift of architecture, there is no such thing as a single small cell equipment. Many forecasts have referred only to self-contained mini base stations with the baseband radio and antenna all integrated. And so far, those forecasts have often proven over optimistic. But talking to operators about real world deployment plans, we see that they will use a mixture of technologies to address their growing numbers of small cells. Those cells, under 200 metres in radius and sitting close to the ground on roofs or lampposts, will reach an installed base of 15 million worldwide by 2019. But they will be served by a combination of small base stations, Wi-Fi only hotspots, combined Wi-Fi cellular access points, DAS nodes, and the emerging breed of virtualized RAN low power distributed radios. Despite the growth of integrated Wi-Fi cellular small cells, as these products become available from late 2014, carrier class Wi-Fi only hotspots will continue to dominate the numbers until 2017. This is partly because they are already a relatively inexpensive and well understood technology, and so do not carry the risks of the other options. In the most recent report from Maravedis Refink, entitled Towards the Hyperdense Network, published in June 2014, we surveyed about 160 operating companies about their five-year network deployment plans. We also modelled five different scenarios for those 15 million small cell sites, taking into account the many variables which will affect the exact combination of hardware deployed by each carrier to meet its indoor and outdoor capacity needs. As the graph shows, DAS, despite rumours of its demise, continues to grow as enhancements are made to its cost and complexity and as it becomes a complement in many cases to small cells rather than an either or. By 2019, virtualized small cells with a large number of radio antenna units sharing a baseband server will be on the way to being mainstream, especially as indoor or venue solutions. The self-contained metro cell will, we believe, be the most important single technology to fill these small sites but not until it has integrated Wi-Fi and significant improvements in cost, power consumption and self-optimization, leading it to overtake simple Wi-Fi in the 2017 to 18 timeframe. This is an important set of dynamics which Maravedis Refink will monitor closely in the years to come. To know more about our services or to discuss this key issue in more detail, please contact Adlone Feller, our Customer Engagement Director. Mm -hmm.